good morning children today we'll be seeing the second part of dual nature of matter and radiation unit 7 of class 12 physics syllabus so yesterday we have studied about einstein's photoelectric equation according to that e into v not equal to half m v max square equal to h nu minus h nu not so in this equation this is work done on electron due to stopping potential v not the product of these two that is elect electronic charge and stopping potential is a measure of maximum kinetic energy attained by the photo electrons emitted and in this case if you recollect h nu is the incident energy that is energy carried by the incident photon and h nu not is the work function that is the minimum energy required by the electrons to come out of the metal surface so the, based on this einstein's photoelectric equation today we will be discussing the laws of photoelectric effect there are four laws we will be seeing one by one according to the first law for a given metal and for given incident frequency that is for given energy of incident photo electron the intensity of incident light it is governing the number of photo electrons emitted because intensity as you know is a measure of number of photons falling on the metal surface as the number of photo electron so photons falling on the metal surface increases the number of photo electrons emitted will also be increasing it's directly proportional we have seen the graph also yesterday that is intensity of intensity light and the photo electric current they are directly proportional so this is the first law so the intensity of incident light is a measure of actually number of photons falling on the metal surface because it is a one to one interaction as number of photons falling on the metal surface increases there will be large number of photo electrons emitted which in turn increase the photoelectric current so that is the first law now second law states that for a given metal surface and for given Uh, metal surface and for a given intensity of photo electrons the there exists a minimum frequency called threshold frequency threshold frequency below which no photoelectric emission will take place that means incident photons should have minimum required energy so that the work function can be overcome plus some energy can be imparted to the photo electrons so that they can come out of the metal surface therefore the threshold frequency is related to the second law now the third law states that the kinetic energy of photo electrons emitted is directly proportional to frequency of incident photon and it does not depend on intensity of incident light so this also we have explain uh, very clearly with the help of the graph yesterday i think you remember that so kinetic energy of incident uh, sorry the kinetic energy of emitted photo electrons is directly proportional to the frequency of incident photons then fourth law states that the process that is photoelectric effect is the instantaneous process instantaneous process so what is the meaning of that it is a very quick process there is no time lag between the incidence of photons and the emission of photo electrons it is calculated experimentally that the time lag is just 10 power minus 9 seconds so you can imagine 10 power minus 9 is very very small quantity so almost at at once the electrons are emitted as soon as uh, the photons are incidenting on the metal surface so these are the four laws of photoelectric effect and we can explain all these four laws based on einstein's photoelectric equation now as einstein he thought that or he observed that 
one photon is interacting with one electron. It is a one to one process and it is a single event and it is an elastic collision. So, as soon as the photons are falling on the metal surface, each photon will interact with one electron and the energy is shared between the incident photon and the electron and part of the energy is utilized for overcoming the work function. You know that work function is the characteristics of every metal surface. Every metal has its own work function and the remaining part of the incident energy is utilized for imparting kinetic energy to the photo electron. So, that they are coming out of the metal surface overcoming the restraining force that is force of attraction between the electron and the positive ions left behind. Okay. So, when, when he, 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 he Einstein uh, told that when one photon is falling on the metal surface one electron is emitted and we also have seen that intensity is a measure of number of photons falling. So, as intensity increases the number of photons falling on the metal surface increases therefore, electron number of electrons emitted is also increasing. So, this explains the first law that is intensity of incident light and radiation is directly proportional to the photo electrons or the other way around that is uh, photoelectric current is directly proportional to intensity of incident radiation. Now, the second part that is second law how to explain this. Now, if you go back to the Einstein's photoelectric equation according to this suppose nu that is the frequency of incident photon if it is less than nu naught. What is nu naught here? Nu naught is the threshold frequency. So, if this happens then according to this equation if you see the kinetic energy will become negative which is not possible because kinetic, en uh, kinetic energy of any system can never be negative. So, this, this condition cannot take place at all that is nu can never be less than nu naught because in that condition this kinetic energy will become negative which is not possible. That means, the minimum frequency that should be possessed by incident photon is should be minimum that is some minimum uh, in a value of frequency that minimum value of frequency is called threshold frequency. So, below this photoelectric emission cannot take place. So, what is this half m v max square actually? It is the kinetic energy possessed by the electrons coming out of the metal surface. So, this kinetic energy of the photo electrons when they cannot be uh, possessing negative kinetic energy that means, no photoelectric effect can take place if the incident photon has frequency less than the threshold frequency. So, this explains the second law. Now, the third law can be explained directly from this equation. So, this is very obvious from this equation that kinetic energy is directly proportional to the frequency of incident photon and there is no intensity coming into this picture. So, kinetic energy of uh, emitted photo electron is directly proportional to the frequency of incident photons and it is independent of intensity of incident light. So, this also we have studied yesterday in the graph. I explained it clearly with the graph yesterday. Then how to explain this instantaneous process? As I mentioned earlier that the photons the interaction between the incident photons and the atoms in the metal surface it is a one to one event that is if one photon is falling one electron will gain the energy from that and energy the electrons can come out with some energy. So, it is a single event and it is also conceived as the elastic collision. So, there is a uh, almost uh, instantaneously the transfer of uh, energy is taking place or sharing of energy is taking place. So, there is no time lag between the incidence of photons and the emission of photo electrons. Therefore, the time lag is calculated to be only 10 power minus 9 seconds. So, we can conclude that photoelectric effect is an instantaneous process. So, based on this photoelectric the Einstein's photoelectric equation we can easily explain all the four laws of photoelectric effect. Now, next we will see how to find out Planck's constant from a graph between stopping potential and frequency of incident photons. Calculation of Planck's constant. You know that symbol of Planck's constant is H. So, if you plot a graph between frequency of incident radiation and stopping potential the symbol we know that it is V naught. So, we get a straight line graph not starting from the origin because you know that 
until unless the threshold frequency is reached there is no photoelectric effect taking place. Therefore, this x axis intercept will give you the threshold frequency. If you extrapolate the graph back you get the y intercept. So, this point y intercept gives work function divided by E. So, now if this straight line graph if you take the slope. So, slope of this graph will be v naught that is the line parallel to the y axis v naught upon nu minus nu naught this portion and this one. Suppose, this correspond to some particular value of stopping potential v naught. So, from this graph straight line graph we get the slope like this from Einstein's photoelectric equation also we can write. So, this also we know. So, from here if you rearrange v naught upon nu minus nu naught will be your h upon e. You can check it by cross multiplication. So, we get this. So, from equation 1 and 2 from equation 1 and 2 we can write slope equal to h by e or h equal to e into slope of the graph. So, from this we can calculate the Planck's constant. Now, in the board exam the this graph particular graph is very very important because they will ask you to draw this graph and they may give some values here and you will be asked to get threshold frequency from the graph they will not mention this here just the graph will be given to you and this scale will be given some values will be given to you and you may be asked to get what is threshold frequency and calculate Planck's constant from this graph. So, that you can do easily by using this formula what is thresh, uh, threshold frequency the x axis intercept will be your threshold frequency and from slope we can calculate h easily using this formula. Now, one more question is possible from this this uh, related to this graph sometimes they may ask you to draw the graph between kinetic energy maximum and frequency of incident photo electron then how we will draw it is actually one and the same because we know that the stopping potential is nothing but the measure of maximum kinetic energy of emitted photoelectron. So, just we have to change this y axis ordinate to kinetic energy maximum. So, the same type of graph only because v naught is a measure of kinetic energy maximum. So, just change by changing v naught to this we will get the same type of graph. So, no need to get confused here this only this thing we have to change it. Now, sometimes in one or two marks question they will be asking you to draw some more graphs. So, these types of graphs can be drawn if your concepts are very clear they are very easy only. For example, suppose you are asked to draw the graph between stopping potential stopping potential and say intensity. So, just now we have seen the graph between stopping potential and frequency. So, that we have drawn. But how to draw the graph between stopping potential in intensity? Just if you think little bit you can get the answer because we know very well that stopping potential is independent of intensity of incident radiation. So, it will be a very simple graph suppose you take intensity on the x axis and stopping potential on the y axis. What will be the nature of the graph? Because of the independent relation you get a straight line parallel to the intensity what is the meaning of this as the intensity changes there is no change in the value of stopping potential. So, this can be asked in one mark. Similarly, if you are asked to draw the graph between photoelectric current photoelectric current and frequency how to draw suppose this is asked like this. So, we can draw. So, this also we know that photoelectric current is uh, the amount of photoelectric current emitted is not depending on the frequency ok that also we know. 
So that means the graph should be a straight line parallel to the frequency axis. But you can't start the graph from here as you have done here. The difference here is that you know very well that until the threshold frequency is reached, there is no photoelectric current emitted. So the graph should start from here. Of course, it is parallel to the frequency axis, but it should start from here. You have to mention corresponding to this nu naught. So this clearly shows that after the threshold frequency is crossed, then only the photoelectric effect is going to take place. After that, the photoelectric current emitted will not be depending on the frequency of incident radiation, but it will depend only on the intensity. And another graph, the photoelectric current on the y axis and here the time taken. So now just now we have seen that photoelectric current is an instantaneous process. So the graph will come like this and corresponding to this what will be the time 10 power minus 9 seconds because within this time the photoelectric effect is going to take place. So the graph will be like this. So whatever concept you are studying you have to thoroughly learn that so that any type of conceptual questions or graph questions are asked you should be in a position to answer them. So next we will see de Broglie's hypothesis of dual nature of matter. So in the previous class we have seen that I just made a mention about dual nature of matter and radiation. I clearly explained you about how the dual nature of radiation has come into picture and then I just mentioned about dual nature of matter also. So yesterday we have seen that in the universe you see everything is 